Ford Transit sliding door handle. Doesn't work. This is where it comes from, I think. Yeah, this way. And when you go to open it, you can't get out from the inside because this is doing nothing. Now I've already unhooked the cables, which are right there. And this lower one, here's your problem. This is broken. That's supposed to be turned by this handle when it goes this way. Just like this one, when you go to close the door, moves the opposite way. Pulls it up, actuates the cable. This one failed. And I believe it was due to um, malalignment or misadjustment on that latch outside for the rollers. I've got it open because I've been checking everything. Latch seems to be fine. The switch is fine. So, ordered a new handle. They're like 25, 30 bucks. And that should take care of that. So, uh, another related issue I was having was here, I've got to open the door with the cable. It's the shorter one. Pull that. Push the door out. And it opens. In this passenger model, that switch that turns the dome lights off also operates the door ajar feature on your dashboard. So if it keeps coming on and the little dinger goes off and says that your door is ajar when you know it's latched and it's not open, let's open this again. Here's the problem. It's not so much that that switch is faulty, at least mine wasn't. It's just that if it isn't pushed in far enough, it'll make contact enough to keep the dome lights on and for that annoying dinger on your dash to go off. Here's the problem. There's a piece of tape right here that that switch pushes against. And if you make this just a little thicker, it pushes that button in further when it closes, like so. Now that button's pushed in far enough that your dome lights will stay off. I don't know how I discovered this, which is weird. But when I had it shut, and the dome lights should go off in about 30 seconds after it's closed, which they did, but if I pushed on this, this panel right here by this cup holder, if I pushed here, the lights came on. And what was happening was that was moving the body just enough for that switch to be fooled into thinking the door was open. So it just needs to be pushed all the way in and stay in so you can either A, adjust your door, which can be a hassle. If it's working fine, I'd leave it alone. Or put something extra thick where that tape is on the other end of the door so that this gets pushed in further and stays in and you shouldn't have the alarms going off. Hope it helps. While you're inside the door, that little zip tie in the middle between those cables holds that rod that goes vertically to the door lock. That kept falling off, so I put that zip tie on there to prevent that from happening. Works like a charm. Driver's door rattle. It sounds like the window's rattling. It's actually the window mechanism. Now, there's three bolts that hold it on. This one, this one, and one in here. This one and mine was missing. Must have rattled uh, loose and fallen in the door. I couldn't find it, but found another one. Threaded it in there, tightened everything up. So, yeah, that one was the magic number for me right there. Put some Loctite on it and torqued it down. Now, hopefully, when you close the door, you don't hear that annoying mission accomplished. As you may or may not be aware of, 
these foam blocks on the original transits weren't coated so they would stick when wet to this plate they go up against and then when they froze when you went to open the door they would either tear in half or come completely off now when I bought this van this side was missing so I cleaned it up and recreated it with some of this foam mat in three pieces these are the only tools I needed what I'm going to do is use this glue to stack these like so and pretty much redo that part glue it onto here like this eh, it ain't pretty but it should get the job done this will in theory seal the way the original did up against that other small piece of foam and this plate Oops, guess I didn't need to glue there, did I? I'll wipe that off. Ford Transit radio removal first pop that one panel that sits up here there's just a couple clips that hold it pop that off two screws here remove the display and then there are two more screws but I don't think I needed to take those out the whole thing would have popped out that's held in with these clips so you just gotta pry up straight up on that and that should come out then you're going to pry up on this panel and take it out. That's got, oh, three, six, nine, like 10 or 12 clips. And then you're going to pry this front panel off and disconnect all the connectors for the harness. This one comes off of the display and these, these three come off the radio. Then we're going to install the new one. This particular kit, made in the USA by the way, which is amazing. Ford Transit 15 and up. This is for the 4 inch display. It just came out of there. Display for the radio. This thing, it's that size. So that's the, that's the dash kit which includes this trim there's a tray that right there and the side supports some other miscellaneous plugs and caps and the new top tray that will end up up here and this will be more of a vertical mount for the Alpine W650, which is a non-mechanical radio, no CD, no DVD. They do make an amplifier that mounts right to the back of this, which I believe there is room for to mount it in here. So that's a future upgrade, which would also take new speakers. So here's our challenge with a Ford Transit that did not come with a USB jack. There was a blank plug stuck in here which you can squeeze and push out. This is what came with my Alpine aftermarket radio, the W, is it WX650, something like that. This goes in the back of the radio, the right angle. The other end is this, you don't want just to hang this out your 
dash somewhere or mount it underneath that's inconvenient. So luckily this slides in here but there's nothing to hold it. It doesn't quite go all the way in so what I've got to do is trim some of these little edges on the inside of this and that should give us just enough for this to sit flush in there up against the front like so and then we'll have to I can push it in there but it doesn't go all the way through so those little ribs are in the way so we'll trim those so it gets up to flush with the panel and then figure out something to hold this in in the back so that when you plug things in it doesn't just pop out the back let's get busy with an exacto knife One down, five to go. So, after about ten minutes of slicing and dicing with the Exacto, this will slide in here right up to the surface and doesn't seem to distort it or anything. And our main goal is to use this with a thumb drive, similar to that. And this one, this one is closable. And there should be plenty of space to get it plugged in, like so. So when it's in the dash, you'll be able to use your thumb drives to the radio. Now we got to figure out how to keep this in there so it doesn't get pushed in. It's not. It's it's it took some pressure to get it in there, but it's not going to stay on its own. So this opening here was already there. Put one around at an angle there to hold it on that side, and then this side I drilled a hole through this little pillar and went around the other direction. I'll trim these off, and it's not going anywhere because it's pinched right up against the front. That ought to work. Some Fords already had the USB in there for the factory radio, mine did not, it just had that blank plug. This will become useless because the aftermarket radio doesn't have the aux input unless maybe you adapted it to your to your preamp outputs or something so you can still use that. But it's got Bluetooth so if I'm going to play music off the phone I'm going to use Bluetooth or I'm going to use a thumb drive because you can fit a ton of files on one of those. Putting in the Alpine W650 and Ford Transit. One of these extended wires from the harness for the new head unit goes to your reverse wire. I already have, sorry, a backup camera mirror, so I don't need that. I may in the future put a front facing camera in. The other wire has to hook to. Your parking brake switch so that it thinks that you're stopped and have the parking brake on to get into any of your normal settings such as hooking up a phone or anything simple like that or watching a video because you shouldn't be doing that while you're driving. Well, I personally did not want to activate that feature because once in a while you want to switch phones from maybe the driver to the passenger and you're not able to do that while you're driving unless you're stopped and have the parking brake on. So enter this little guy from Micro Bypass. This one is specifically for Alpine radios and that is going to fool your new head unit into thinking that the parking brake is on. You can just hook your parking brake wire to ground, but these new radios are smart and they want to pulse that ground two, three times and see it back and forth every time the radio turned on, is turned on. So, a lot of people wire in a switch somewhere 
you know, a ground switch with that wire so that you can switch it on and off each time you start the radio. Well, I don't, definitely do not want to do that. So, Micro Bypass makes these. There's other brands as well, but these, these guys seem fairly legit and, from what I've read, reliable. Three wires. Let's see if it works. Radio's on. Now, a lot of these things would not show up if you didn't have that parking brake wire hooked together and didn't have the parking brake on. But now you'll be able to adjust things while you're driving. Everything is active. Before, the only thing active was the sound and I believe the connectivity, but it didn't do anything. So now you can add your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and get into your system settings which is your clock and all that good stuff they don't want you doing any of that while you're driving I guess so that hence the the safety wire but this micro bypass unit does just what it promises it bypasses that so looks like we're good just what I wanted but be safe folks don't watch a video and play with your settings while you're driving have a nice day. Because a lot of guys will, will turn it until those notches line up and then just you just pull the disc and it acts like a slide hammer on the oh, I see what axle. Mean. Shouldn't need it's just a C clip in there. This rear brake job scares a lot of people. It's not as difficult as you might think. The tricky bit is you've got to pull that center axle shaft out. It's just the way they're made. You just pull that out after you take the, the wheel off and the disc. This set was particularly bad. Those pads just delaminated and came apart. Probably just from salt and rusting. Here they are with the new discs back on. You should replace these bolts every time you change the brakes because you've got to tighten them down to torque and then add a quarter turn. They're stretch bolts. The problem with a lot of these early transits, this is a 2015, you can see how the brake wear on those pads is at an angle. It's not straight like it should be. And the issue was they put the backing plate, at least that's what Ford calls it, the backing plate, I would call it the calf bracket. They put them on left for right and right for left so they need to be swapped. There's a technical service bulletin about this. This little indent and this should be reversed, you know, from the left side to the right side and the right side to the left side. I'll put a link in the description with that, that TSB and that's the fix. This is a phone mount I made myself. This is a motorcycle phone mount. I only used half of the mount that should go around a handlebar and made this triangular shaped piece of aluminum to mount it to the dash.